so we were uh, saying that like uh, uh, there is a need for text processing and around uh, like um, uh, 85% uh, the unstructured data is available so better techniques and algorithms are required to extract useful and interesting information from large amount of data and uh, like uh, this uh, text processing or we are studying this uh, with the different areas like text processing text mining information extraction nlp uh, like this okay so we have seen also what is the need basically for this uh, text processing we have seen like uh, internet usage uh, how many users are there in the world as i said you that this was from last year's statistics um, something around almost uh, six seven months back uh, so total number of web websites that are available and the emails that are sent uh, and the google searches uh, not today okay all these are uh, long back six months back so maybe like i believe that during the corona time these figures must have increased a lot right mm. and also we have seen uh, like uh, in one minute uh, how much data is being generated we have just gone through we were going through this uh, slide i believe and uh, we you can see that the statistics here the figures are so huge when we consider in 2020 every minute of the day uh, how much data is being generated uh, it is every one minute of the day not data okay so the title is as such uh, so you can just you must have observed right this I, as i said you like i have taken this uh, uh, slide from the domo sapiens and there you can see like for 2020 i have taken you can take it and check it even for 2019, 20, 18, 20, uh, 17, 16, 15, 14, like that. You can just go and check it like that, okay? Uh, the How the data is being generated. So if you see year by year, uh, the data generation is so huge. Uh, maybe like a, uh, as once I have seen like uh, something around way back in 2016 or something like that. I have been seeing 2016 or 2015 like that, okay? YouTube. Uh, like uh, how many hours of uh, videos that are being uploaded it was 32 hours okay or uh, you youtube users used to upload 32 hours of video in single minute now you just imagine that after four five years uh, how many hours it is showing in a single minute in 2020 it is we are uh, uh, uploading around 500 hours of video you can see the statistics there see how it means to say that like how the data is being generated how huge the data is right so uh, am i syncing with the slides now at least yes yes text, text, okay. text. Uh, text processing okay uh, so the world puts out as much as 2.5 exabytes of data every day which means 90 years of worth high definition videos or maybe like a uh, 530 million songs or 150 million iPhones uh, data or maybe like the company they are very uh, egoistically now looking into the data okay uh, to extract some gold rush of data uh, even you see you can just understand that how much data is available uh, in www it's very huge right you can see even when you take a stock market data let us assume that we are taking a stock market data available there you can see that every minute every seconds not seconds also in nano fraction of seconds the uh, goes ups and downs and all the data need to be noted and it is available in some servers okay the uh, bsc or nse uh, stocks and all if you if you are just considering it as it as only uh, maybe like uh, simply a, the stock exchange of india if you take it like maybe of different different countries various countries the stock exchanges and all how it will vary okay the, uh, how much data is being generated also can you just imagine so uh, we see that a messenger chatbot allows organizations to engage personally with customers uh, over 64 percent of the customers believe that companies need to be 
contactable so always uh, like a customers as a customer we always need like uh, somebody to help us maybe like in some uh, when we need some help we immediately reach out to our uh, and the companies maybe like even when you come uh, purchase something okay when you buy something or even when you are accustomed with something or to do work it out working out uh, for some problem or for some something with the uh, company you need the help so maybe like a person the company recruiters the recruit uh, recruitment for the company may be very small in number so in that case but everybody everybody there are hundreds and thousands of customers and everybody cannot be given personal attention but still the customers need to be provided with that feel of personal attention maybe like if you just to take a bank how many customers are there in a bank you just imagine that there are crores and crores of uh, customers in a bank right at least a few lakhs of uh, customers even in a new bank do you think that how many employees will be there in a bank maybe like you can just imagine that less than 1000 for a new bank and this less than 1000 people has to manage those lakhs and lakhs of people you can just imagine that and it is uh, like a given here over 64% of customers believe that companies need to be contactable on chat applications at least and incorporate chatbot with the effective nlp features so a uh, prediction given by gartner states that over 85% of the customer enterprise relationship will happen without much human interaction by the year 2020 you are also able to notice that nowadays uh, even when you uh, you enter into any site maybe like suppose for a hp you you purchased a printer in hp you need to reach out to the customer base uh, or so, sorry uh, to the um, customer care unit how do you do do you think that you you call to the customer uh, care and then he will be readily available for you no uh, you know that there are see these things make you little bit suppose some ivr systems are there so or like some chatbot systems are there so then exactly you can be diverted your problem can be diverted to the right person rather than wastage of the time maybe like suppose a person who is very good at repairing or he is a high technician in he deals technical activities with a printer and there is another person who deals uh, technical aspect uh, aspects of uh, this uh, xerox machines for example and suppose hp is providing this both xerox machines and printers and suppose these two technical persons are there available and suppose you call to a person and then the uh, and you are interested to speak about printer and it goes to the technician of a xerox person then you just imagine that he, he will not be able to guide you properly rather it has to be brought to the right person the printer mechanic right or to the uh, person who handles the printers uh, who has got uh, much uh, worse knowledge about the vast uh, knowledge about the printers so this is how it happens okay so suppose a chatbot is there and you state all your problems okay these are the problems with you uh, or maybe like IVR system, a guided problem uh, uh, guiding you to maybe what is the exact problem, then you will be redirected for the specific person. Maybe like uh, that too, maybe like you can have more personal and more guided way of solving the problem. Okay. Now, uh, as I said you, like, uh, let me show you at least uh, if we can put up here i think this also needs some time so let us not look into the video let us go into the text uh, as i said you that like data is represented in binary basically in our systems and uh, like different ways that we represent the data are character or image or maybe like sound it is already shown here right like it is given here how a character we represent uh, using a byte and similar sequence of characters uh, as a word or a sequence of words as a sentence or something like that but it is all everything is sequence of bytes and each image uh, we use maybe like a, it consists of pixels maybe like millions of pixels and all and each pixel uh, has got three basic uh, it is uh, like each pixel has got some uh, the uh, like a you have it is made up of rgb red green and blue 
and each of these base color can be represented using a byte so three bytes are required maybe to represent one pixel so a typical video or a graphic has 30 images per second 30 images per second if you see it means that one image has got maybe if you are using um, uh, what is uh, 28 cross 28 maybe a very small one very um, the image the size we are taking just 28 cross 28 it means that like the image okay or maybe like a, uh, a uh, 1000 cross 1000 so you can just imagine that how many pixels again in 1000 cross 1000 means how many pixels are there 1000 into 1000 right so that many pixels into you see 30 images okay that many pixels into uh, the size of the image into 30 that you are trying to process it within one second again Similarly, a sound is basically a series of vibrations in air and vibrations can be represented graphically as a wave and any point in the waveform can be represented as a number. And similarly, any sound can be broken down into a series of numbers. Now you need to take into consideration this one. This is just I have given like how data is being represented or image or sound is represented. Okay. So we have a wide variety of applications in NLP that we have seen in our last. Uh, so the basic structure for text processing is also, also given here, right? Like uh, the applications uh, interface for uh, you have the application interface, maybe like different different uh, interfaces, maybe like either a command line or a cloud or maybe like a, uh, through some option or some voice or maybe like that. OK, assume that this uh, application interface with this application interface, you you translate uh, the user queries into information for appropriate responses. So uh, maybe like the NLP layer, it uses the uh, knowledge base and then it tries to derive the answer and give it give it back to you. And also maybe like it may project some statistical uh, statistics for various analytical aspects later. OK. Uh, so we we also were going through the various stages of NLP uh, like uh, you have input sentence then you have the morphological processing uh, uh, where like the sentence may occur in different different forms and then you can have lexical analysis where you use the lexicons okay uh, lexicons are the different different properties of that particular uh, uh, lexeme and then you have can you can try to use it you have to, this uh, syntax analysis where you try to find the uh, grammatical portion of the so we use the grammar for of a of that particular language uh, for syntax analysis then we try to extract the meaning and that is the semantic analysis uh, using semantic rules here the input that is given for the semantic analysis this is the semantic rules then we have got the contextual information okay using the contextual information what is the meaning actually you may understand we were giving few examples when we were dealing with the uh, nlp stages right in the context okay the you 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 know that some jokes or maybe some sentences are contextual dependent you cannot use it or you cannot say that this is a joke okay afterwards maybe like in the uh, when the context is not available then you, you even you we use the same sequence of words that spell out from your mouth, but still you will not get the laugh or the feel of it, right? So contextual information is required there. Now, sometimes there is uh, like a few things need connecting of the sentences to get the exact meaning. You know that sometimes when some people are speaking under two people are speaking, the third person comes. Two people are speaking already and they are speaking about arguing about something or maybe like they are just discussing about something. The third person comes and he doesn't know what is uh, maybe like on what like earlier what was told and then what are the next sentences to be so he cannot make a complete conclusion so he, he he cannot get unless and until he knew the previous history so if he has the connection information then you can give the, uh, you can get the exact meaning that is what we call it as the discourse analysis okay in the discourse analysis you can do it now then uh, we also uh, just uh, for a text uh, processing processing of the text let us just see it or like a, initially whatever the corpus that you get it you need to pre-process the data okay 
you need to pre-process the data. What is this pre-processing? Is like uh, various activities that you may have to take it. Like uh, you have a long sentences and all, you need to split the sentences. Maybe, uh, maybe like the complete paragraph into splitting, splitting of the sentences to sentences to again words, like zims like that. Uh, okay, tokenization and all. So whatever maybe. Okay, then noise removal, the normalization activity, all these things may come under pre-processing. Uh, sometimes maybe like if the complete if uh, you do sentence splitting and all then or paragraph splitting or maybe like the uh, problem wise maybe like the uh, chapter splitting or something when you are able to do it then maybe you may require tokenization or maybe like tokenization also can be take, taken into uh, the uh, pre-processing activities no issue okay then uh, you have the token id uh, map uh, then uh, what you try to do is that using this token id okay using this token id what they can try to do is that they can extract some features also from there right they can extract so looking into some dictionary or maybe or something like uh, uh, wherever the references are available from there or from inferences and all you can try to uh, using the ids uh, it can be you can generate some ids and from these ids also you can generate the features or from tokens you can do the feature extraction and from feature extraction you can generate the ids okay so this is uh, what you what, what we are just trying to do here is that when representing the data okay uh, what we can do this uh, various steps that we try to achieve it and once we achieve this one then we shall again like maybe like in the pre processing this is only pre processing step that is given here so this can be provided as an input but this input may be in one of the different forms so like maybe like they may be embedded with some other uh, forms maybe like a, a, like a one hot encoding or count vectors or tf idf or any other embedding word embedding techniques like skip gram continuous bag of words or co-occurrence matrix or count vectors so like this different different uh, methods can be used here for this input now with that input maybe like again th that forms as the basis maybe for your language processing uh, so as we already know that tokenization is the process of breaking up into small pieces okay so it works by separating words using spaces and punctuation right uh, like see let's go to new york so how we tokenize it the last line here the green complete green this is the completely tokenized okay this is completely tokenized so you how many tokens are there one two three four five six seven eight eight tokens are there let's go to new york so even the exclamation the quotes everything as a separate separate token okay now so uh, the uses of tokenization is like break a sentence uh, complex sentence into words and understand the importance of each of the word with respect to the sentence and produce a structural description uh, uh, on the input. So you have, you can make it like a different uh, tokenizations or maybe like a, uh, depending on the combination of maybe like one or more tokens, like tokens of two consecutive written words are known as bigrams, tokens of three consecutive written words are known as trigrams and tokens of any number of consecutive written words or n number of Consecutive written words are known as anagrams. So here it is the uh, example is given as unigram, bigram, trigram. So few activities that we may have to do it also for the feature extraction active uh, problem. Maybe like uh, some normalization activities, uh, stemming or lemmatization, that type of things also we may have to do it. Sir, so, uh, yes. Sir, could you please repeat that uh, biogram in the same uh, uh, sentence you referred? Could you yes. please repeat, sir, one sec? Go back. I'm just going back to you. Just read it here. What is the confusion? No, the sentence is the same. But no, this is a sentence. You see, you see on the right side it is given unigrams. This is a sentence. So everything is a separate, separate uh, word here. Unigram. Okay. okay. 
Uh, by gram, what you will do? Two two words. You are going to take it. So this is a sentence for this. This is okay. is a a sentence. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Got it. By gram is this is a and uh, is a sentence. Okay. Okay, okay. Thank you. Okay. So uh, stemming is normalized words into its base form or the root form. Uh, for example, the word fish, fishes, and fishing all stem into the word called fish. And uh, one thing that you need to know about this uh, stemming is that results may not be the root word. For example, uh, the word like study, study, studying, studied. Okay, everything will rootify, or it uh, the root uh, root uh, word is taken as s t u d i. Okay, which is not a English perfect English word, right? Whereas for lemmatization, it is not like that. So lemmatization is it groups words together different inflected forms of the word into a lemma or the main word okay the root word here the root word is which has a perfect meaning so output of lemma or lemmatization is a proper word for example a lemmatizer should map like this gone going and went into go okay now you understand maybe like a, this is what like the difference between stem uh, stemming and lemmatization okay then there are so, so many stop words and all the common words which are ignored by most search engines uh, because including them increases the size of the index or the matrix without improving any precision or recall that's why we generally we try to uh, cut it out cut down okay all these stop words and all see some of them are in is yours to my of and all this are not required these are stop words okay we consider this as the stop words uh, then we also have got this uh, uh, parts of speech so we are having some noun pronoun verb adjective verb adverb uh, then like a conjunction preposition article interjection like this we are having some nine parts of speech and what we in every language we know that there is our uh, there is a parts of speech right so now given a sentence our duty is to identify which parts of speech a particular word comes under see this is a uh, as we have seen earlier also that this is basically a problem morphological problem is very huge here or there is so much confusion existence of one or more uh, form it may be apple is a fruit apple is a Uh, apple is a company right you you take it apple apple is a fruit or you can apple is a uh, company okay so you just uh, uh, understand that here like existing a word getting existence in more than one form so sometimes maybe a word may be adjective sometimes it may be a verb it sometimes it may be a noun or it may be a adverb or something like that we'll see some examples and so here it is given here see uh, parts of speech simply means labeling words with their appropriate parts of speech the parts of speech explains how a word is used in a sentence and there are eight main parts of speech and the, those are like noun pronoun adjective verbs adverbs and then preposition conjunction and interjection okay so like this we are having various parts of speech and we need to identify each word each word suppose you speak hindi hindi main mera naam satya okay mera naam satya what is the parts of speech for mera okay what is the uh, parts of speech for naam what is the parts of speech for satya my name is satya so what is the parts of speech for my what is the parts of speech for uh, 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 what is the tag basically parts of speech here means what is the parts of speech tag for uh, like uh, you you need to tag this is the parts of speech tagging is like tagging means you are uh, uh, annotating maybe like this my is like a, a uh, pronoun okay uh, is my name maybe a uh, pronoun uh, a noun okay is uh, maybe like a helping verb or a verb Uh, maybe like then satya is a noun so like this okay you 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 need to give it like for each of this word entity you need to attach with one of the parts of speech okay 
and uh, the word class you have seen also earlier what we have discussed like we are having open class uh, words and then we are having closed uh, close uh, closed class words like uh, nouns are basically proper noun we have common noun then verbs as main verb or like helping verbs or uh, those type of verb, uh, verbs and all uh, model verbs uh, then we have like uh, adjectives okay you can say that adjectives and adverbs and number sometimes comes under this uh, like a closed and it can be closed and open also okay uh, and see only one thing is that open class means where we have uh, the words can be derived it has got it can new words can be derived much okay and the closed class means basically new words are very rarely derived so like for example a and the the uh, you are having uh, articles okay uh, a and d like the determiners do you think that a and b and something some other word will come it is rarely we, we, we do not basically uh, no other words are added in the english dictionary or maybe like that language dictionary for that particular uh, class of uh, uh, like a pos like parts of speech so that's why we we call them as closed class okay so few close closed class are there uh, particles prepositions interjections pronouns uh, conjunction determiners like these are called uh, these are the basically uh, closed class okay open class means new words may come into picture uh, so we have seen about the say ambiguity in uh, parts of speech like some examples see you you see here back okay words often have more than one parts of speech how see the same word back the back door what is the parts of speech for back door anyone the back door door adding something something adding something for the door back is adding something so it becomes an adjective okay noun something now okay then on my back now it becomes a noun back becomes a noun. Uh, win the waters back you are winning the waters waters back so something uh, refining the verb or something like that and you are making that one as an adverb you just imagine that okay similarly uh, promise to back the bill back the bill here becomes verb now the same word back okay you are sometimes you are telling that it is an adjective sometimes you are telling it is a noun sometimes you are calling that one as an uh, adverb and sometimes you are calling that one as a verb but the word the sound sir, sir ppt is uh, screen is not visible ppt is not so shown basically okay yeah yes sir now it's coming now it's coming yes yes and there is some delay again maybe some problem started again okay anyway no issue but you can see that okay words are often uh, having different different parts of speech the same word back but we have got different uh, parts of speech for that particular word back okay now similarly deciding the correct uh, parts of speech can be difficult even for like a uh, human beings you see around can be a participle preposition or adverb see you, here you just uh, uh, see here uh, mrs jackson never got around to joining around here is taken as a participle sorry uh, particle particle okay and next sentence you see all we got to do is go around the corner go around the corner now this around is preposition it's preposition and the next one you see chatto petros cost around dollar 225 what is this chatto petros anybody know nobody knew it okay fine no issue chatu petrus cost around uh, dollar 
2250. So it means that around here is adverb. Okay, cost around. Okay, cost around. So this is adding something for the cost or cost. Okay, cost which is a verb. Uh, so even number number combination should be tagged as adjectives. If they have the same distribution as adjectives. So now you see here. Okay, hyphenated fractions like one half, three fourth, seven eighth, one and a half, seven and a eighth, seven and three eighths should be tagged as adjectives. When they are pre, uh, when they are pre nominal modifiers, but they should be tagged as adverbs if they could be replaced by double or twice like that. Hmm? Double the situation, okay? Double the problem, twice the problem. So this type of things when we use, it becomes uh, adverb. Otherwise, hyphenated numbering that becomes adjectives only, okay? One half a cup, one half cup, a full cup, okay? So one half the amount, twice the amount. So twice the amount here, twice is adverb, okay? Double the amount is again adverb. One half the amount. You see here, see different, different, uh, how you're uh, uh, using it. Simply, like if they could be replaced with the words like uh, sorry here one half is a uh, one of the amount is uh, this uh, uh, it's a rb so, sorry jj that is adjective okay one of the amount that is adjective so please uh, that is even for humans also it becomes a little bit confused confusing right so uh, it is said that like about 11% of the word types in the brown corpus are ambiguous with regard to the parts of speech. Now you see here, but they tend to be very common words. Example that you see a word called that. I know that he is honest. O honest here you do like interjection. Okay, that so uh, yes, that was and uh, that was a nice that was nice so it becomes a determiner you can't go that far adverb right so 40 percent of the words word tokens are ambiguous uh, you need to understand that what is a token and what is type like a token is instance or individual occurrence of a type okay now, as we said you that earlier also, uh, this class as a uh, minor revision class for the concepts, uh, main concepts that are being covered here. Uh, like we have a pen tree bank corpus. We are having two basic corpus, like brown corpus and pen tree corpus. Okay, brown universe, corpus from Brown University and corpus from Pennsylvania State University. Okay, so pen tree bank corpus, we call this one as pen tree bank corpus and that one as a brown corpus. Okay. So in we, in pen tree bank corpus, we are having 45 tags and in brown corpus, something around 87 tags are there available. It means that more conditionals conditions are being applied there. OK, so how many parts of speech that we are having in English? Basically, may you call as if I including a particle as a nine or something like that. But here with number, with a degree or something like that, with cardinalities and with the different forms, maybe like a non third person or singular or plural and all coming all those as a different combinations. In brown corpus, we are having 87 uh, tags and then in uh, pantry bank corpus, we are having 45 tags. So a example of uh, pH tagging is given here. The waiter cleared the plates from the table. So different tags that are given are like that. What are the different different tags? Uh, it is just given the. It is the determiner. Hmm. Then like dog noun. Uh, then it is uh, pa uh, 
past tense of the verb and the as a determiner again noun cat as a noun like that okay uh, but you need to understand here here there is a significance for giving you this particular structure the dog at the cat if you see like this the after the dog after dog at so this determines basically okay this is a sequence okay this is a sequence so finding out the parts of speech exactly for this one maybe like when we are using this neural networks and all this comes directly into picture this type of sequencing then the tagging finding out the tag there becomes more easy more easy with respect to the context right whether what was the word that has earlier occurred or maybe like what is the word that is going to or what is the parts of speech basically that is going to occur so uh, do you think that maybe like some word is there first word is a determiner second word what are the possible things maybe noun or should there be a interjection the of the uh, something like that the under do you expect that uh, such type of words occur there okay as an interjection words after the it is difficult because that particular type of parts of speech will never occur in that particular combination so uh, so that's why we can expect to some extent in, in this context like what would be the possible next word or what would be the possible sequence of words like that that's why we have seen our, uh, again like uh, earlier also we have seen like hidden markov model right about predicting or what would be the possibility of that particular word occurring so once we get that only okay if, if the probability is high there then we can agree with or we can allow that particular word to happen or occur so you can use it uh, as a statistical nlp task distinguishes the sense of the word and it is easy to evaluate uh, and you can infer semantic information also with this pos tagging so we are having one more concepts also the named entity recognition it is mostly the task of automatically finding the finding and sorting the different categories whether something some word you tell it whether it is a people whether it is a date whether it is a time whether it is a location whether it is a person or whether it is some number cardinal number or some ordinal number in some order and or whether any organization like this so name identity recognition is is given here what is the type of uh, the uh, name identity whether it is a person date or uh, different different uh, named entities okay that is geographical location uh, that type of things are uh, given here tagging is uh, provided here Uh, so here okay uh, let's leave this video and we are having this te text representations we will see this uh, text representations basically uh, tomorrow okay or word embeddings we will have it uh, tomorrow